Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives, uh, still working on industrial electronics. And three, uh, in this platform, we have the question uh, that we are going to continue from April 2021 uh, question paper, which is a continuation uh, from where we left now on question number four, where we are given to draw on 4.1. Uh, that is the first part that we are given, draw a neat labeled circuit diagram of a full wave doubler. Okay, so that's a doubler that we are going to have for well, the full wave. All right, so we have our second diagram. Remember, guys, a fourth doubler in this one, we are going to have two diodes, uh, D1 and D2. Uh, the input that is from the transformer, uh, then the capacitor C1 and uh, C2 for doubling. So that is uh, the second diagram. I think it's actually clear. Make sure that you indicate properly everything so that you can be able to obtain four marks from there, the diodes, uh, the connection of the diodes properly uh, connected. All right, then the 4.2, we are given the reverse bias in a reactor diode determines the thickness of the depletion layer and also the junction capacitance. 4.21, draw the characteristic curve of a reactor diode. Remember, a reactor diode curve. There you are asked, okay, the symbol, I, I wanted to draw the symbol. Actually, they need you to draw it uh, later on, but the first thing was for you to draw the characteristic curve. All right, so anyways, let's put it stage by stage. So that's what we have, the characteristic curve of a variator. Remember, it acts as a capacitor. So that is why we have got capacitance uh, measured in picofarads, then the voltage. Uh, so by doing this, you can be able to actually obtain a three marks for that. Okay, 4.22, now they want you to have the circuit symbol of a variator. So they can be given in so many ways. Uh, let me see what I have for you here uh, for the variator. All right, so like I said, they can be given in so many ways. You can uh, give your variator in this way manner. Uh, this is an arrow that we are having here. It's an arrow, or you can have it uh, this way. Still, that's a variator uh, that we are having. Most important part is the indication of the capacitance part that we have. So it can work as a capacitor. Okay, name one use of a variator. We've been talking about this, that it can be given as a capacitor. So that means whenever there is capacitance part, then we can use it. So it can be used in tuning capacitor in televisions because the capacitor now is where it is now more of a capacitor. So it can be used there in a tuning capacitor as a tuning capacitor, as a variable capacitor in resonant circuits, then variable capacitor in a band pass circuit. So they were just given any one for you to, uh, to answer that question, because that is the use and it is just one mark there. So take note also of the marks that you're given. 4.3, photoconductors are one of the most common transducers used in electronics. Describe the operation of a photoconductor. What does a photoconductor mean? Well, as long as you talk of photo, which means there's issue of light there. Okay, the resistance of a photoconductor decreases with the increase in light. So like I was saying that whenever I've got photo there, think of light, okay? But there, the resistance now, it decreases as the light increases. That is the, 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 the operation that we are given. And that's two marks for that. 4.4, the Wheatstone bridge is used as a basic, as a basis for most transducer circuit. Describe the, pre, the working principle of a Wheatstone bridge. Do not draw the diagram, guys. We are asked to describe the operation. Okay, so let's see. What we have, the Winston Bridge has four resistive arms connected to a supply and a now detector galvanometer. The current through the galvanometer depends on the value of the resistors. If they are equal, no current flows through the galvanometer. So that is, if they have got equal resistance, no current is going to flow. So the current flow is determined by the difference in terms of the resistive of the of the, the resistors that we have. All right, so that's it. On 4.5, we are given microphones use the piezoelectrical effect. There is a piezoelectrical effect of crystal transducers to produce electrical current draw, a neat labeled sketch of a basic construction of a microphone. So this is the construction of a microphone. So that's our microphone, guys. Uh, I've got uh, the crystal here, the plunger, the diaphragm, the metal plates, the metal or plastic bag, 
then the terminal. So that's how actually a microphone looks like. So uh, the most important guys, just make sure that uh, you draw proper balls. They will mark uh, out of four and uh, they will consider you. This is, this is an exam guys, remember that. So they consider everything, but make sure that your diagrams, they are neat enough. Okay, everything is clearly labeled and indicated. You can obtain a total of four marks from there. So that's what we had, guys, from this question paper, which was written in April 2021. Question number four, as you can see, carrying a total of 17 marks. So these are the typical questions that you might have. So our major part is for you to understand how to answer these questions, especially when exams are approaching like this. So that's it, guys, from Amazon African Motives, working on industrial electronics and two. N3, this is N3. It's because I've been working with N2, working with N3, working with N4, working with N1. But this one is for N3. That's it, guys. Till we meet again.